us now is Mohammed Shafiq, chief executive of the Rochdale-based Ramadan Foundation, who also features in that documentary last night. Thank you very much for Could coming you know in. Um, uh, Nazir Afsal says too many Muslims still blame the grooming victims for the sexual exploitation they suffered. And as we saw on the street there, just one of the people that Stuart spoke to agreed. What's your opinion of that? Well, I think there is a problem amongst these criminals who think that white worlds are worthless. I've said this so many times uh, to you on, on, on this program. Th th it's an element of racism. They don't treat their own daughters like that. They don't treat Muslim girls like that, yet they're prepared to treat white girls like that because they so think So not just slang. sexist, you believe that there is a racist Absolutely. element Absolutely, well. and I've been pretty consistent since 2007 saying there is an element of racism involved. Now, that's a difficult thing to say when, when you're living within the community and you, you see the, the sort of reaction that we've just heard uh, on the screen. But I, I just think you've got to confront it. You've got to call it out for what it is. It's racism. They have a negative opinion about white girls. Um, oh. and, and in some cases, people are excusing the rape of children. I'm sorry, a child under the age of 16 mm. cannot consent to sexual activity. So how do you confront that, then, with that small minority uh, in the community that, that isn't getting that, that is still racist and sexist towards these girls? Well, I think the vast majority of the British Muslim community abhor what has mm. gone on. Uh, you know, I live in Rochdale. I talk to people within the Pakistani community in Rochdale, uh, disgusted by that. We're parents ourselves, mm. you know. Um, I think... Where were we in 2007? There was a complicity and silence from the authorities um, and there was people in the community who didn't want to address this. But actually, I think many years later, Rochdale is in a much stronger position than we were uh, back in 2012. You see, a, a, you know, a strong a zero tolerance from the council and the police and you see a team, I think you featured it yesterday, the Sunrise team, uh, which is cross-agency working together to protect children. So actually, uh, Rochdale is in a much stronger position than some of the other towns. As you said, you have been saying these things for a long time. Have you suffered personally? Because a lot of people will be angry and upset by what you're saying. They might even say that you've helped the cause of the far right and anti-Muslim groups. I I've had a, over the last seven years people saying to me, you know, I'm a recruiting sergeant for the EDL and the far right. Um, I'm an apologist. But actually, I, I just said to them, as I said tonight, that the, the reason why the far right have tried seeking political advantage is because of these grooming gangs. So if you've got any anger directed towards these evil men, not me. We've seen um, a drama now about the Rochdale case. We've seen now a documentary. Do you believe that, that things like this can make a difference, that they will get into the consciousness of the public? I, I think it's a massive... Uh, and that's the reason why I wanted to get involved uh, in it when I was approached, uh, because it needs to get a very strong message across. Actually, in Rochdale, you know, thousands of taxi drivers have received uh, education lessons around child sexual exploitation, as have students at school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whilst we're focusing about historical context here, I think Rochdale's in a much stronger position to deal with the threats uh, and bring people together. Right. Mohamed Shafiq, thank you very much for Thanks coming so in. Nice to see you.